I meet a lot of people who run databases in Kubernetes. And sometimes I ask a question, is your database in Kubernetes ready for production? Some people answer yes. And I have a doubts. I am Mikola. I am putting databases into Kubernetes for five years. I am co-author of several database operators for Kubernetes. And in that talk, I want to share with you questions which I would love to ask to myself before considering that that database cluster or that database solution is ready for production. So first thing first, losing data is not acceptable, period. We shouldn't lose any data if one of our members died. No way. Uh, we should uh, select new primary and promote uh, that primary uh, as new leader and switch all traffic to new primary. But how application will know that we have new primary? How uh, you will switch the traffic? That's the question. Also, not only one member is an issue. Uh, what if all members of your cluster died simultaneously? It is full cluster crash situation. How uh, your solution will recover that database cluster, uh, select a member with the latest data, and promote it as a leader and reconfigure replication automatically. And okay, you started, it is highly available, you uh, can lose one member, you can lose all members and recover data. In that case, what about you're running for a year and one of your members lost all the data? How you will? Uh, restore that data on that member automatically, how you will uh, return uh, that member to the healthy status we in sync with other members automatically. What about is your solution reliable enough uh, to prevent split brain? What about disaster recovery? What, can you run with your solution two different uh, database clusters in two different Kubernetes clusters in different regions? For example, one uh, Kubernetes in US and another Kubernetes in Frankfurt. Uh, is it possible to uh, configure replication and uh, monitor that replication and self-heal that replication automatically. Another topic is uh, health, uh, health checks. How you uh, decide that that member is healthy? Uh, in what case we should restart that member? In what case we should uh, kill that member with all the data and uh, make initial sync to that member and recover replication. So health checks is a good topic. But even if all your members of your cluster, cluster are healthy, what about status of whole cluster? Maybe cluster uh, cannot accept rights. So even if all members are healthy, it does not mean that cluster is healthy. And you need to monitor that thing and report that thing correctly. And uh, for sure, of course, uh, there are readiness checks, uh, which members can receive traffic, which members cannot receive traffic and readiness status of members. Of course, you still need to consider such simple things as advanced pod scheduling. You should be able to schedule your pods to different hardware, for example, in different availability zones. You maybe want to tolerate to some actions like 
node restart, uh, fast node restart uh, without moving pod to another hardware, and so on. And when your database is highly available, that's great. Is it secure? That's the question. Uh, so uh, definitely uh, authentication must be enabled by default. And uh, you should have separate users for operations like monitoring, backups, self-healing and other stuff. And you should be able to rotate passwords for that users. Uh, of course, uh, there are another question when you spin up your application and your database uh, the first time uh, you should be able to create application users, application credentials for each application separately during the creation of the, your deployment. Uh, also, you should be able to rotate your passwords for uh, that applications without downtime. May build up can help their central user management. Also, another topic uh, is encryption in transit, TLS. How can I uh, put my own certificates for that database cluster? How can I uh, issue certificates for that database cluster automatically. Great, if you uh, issued certificate, that is only part of the deal. Now you need to be able to validate certificate. How application know that that uh, TLS certificate is valid? Uh, how application uh, can be sure that it is secure also is certificate rotation. For example, you had one certificate and after that you need to rotate it to another certificate. How can I, how can you do that without downtime? That's a good question. Maybe uh, you can have integration with HashiCorp Vault. Uh, maybe HashiCorp Vault uh, can be source of keys for encryption at rest. For example, maybe you want to encrypt your database files uh, on that cloud provider because you care about security of your data. And uh, even if you solve it, encryption in transit, encryption and rest and authentication, that's not it about security databases as any other applications have security bugs how can you update your database version most probably automatically or semi-automatically without downtime think about it it is not so simple as it you can think uh, and of course, about security, you may be worried about security context, maybe not. But if your database is highly available and secure, there are still a lot of questions uh, about production readiness. When you spin up new cluster with new application, you need to put a schema into your database. You need to create tables, you need to create uh, indexes and so on. How can you create uh, automatically schema inside your database when you create new, absolutely new cluster de deployment? Okay, you run at your database. Uh, next thing, uh, most probably is after some time, you need more resources. You need more CPUs, you need more memory, you need more disk space. Uh, and maybe you need more replicas. So how can you do automatically or manually horizontal and vertical scaling? Think about it, especially without downtime. Uh, another semi-security issue uh, is can you do offline deployments? For example, you have private registry and you want 
to uh, download all images, uh, only trusted images, only from your private registry. In that case, is your solution uh, allows you of doing that. What about database plugins? Uh, for example, can you put your custom database plugin uh, in your solution? Uh, for example, GIS, you want to put GIS data to your database and you need GIS plugin. Another thing, some application works only with exact, exact version of the database. Is it possible to select exact version of the database? That can be challenging uh, for you and your application. Another thing, can you customize configuration of the database? Uh, is it possible to have uh, change it buffers or any other internal things uh, tunable not just few but all of them and another topic maybe you need uh, some read replica for analytics uh, and this uh, read replica will be on slow disk and in another data center and uh, that member shouldn't be part of primary elections uh, is it possible to do with your database solution? What about performance? Can you uh, utilize local storage? Because network storage is good, it is reliable, it is good solution and uh, so on, but sometimes it is slow and you want to utilize local storage. Is it possible? What about other uh, simple things like pausing and pausing cluster, log rotations, for example, write ahead logs okay, eat a lot of space on the disk and you should be able to rotate them. What about arm support? And at that point, I hope you understand that it's impossible to run database in Kubernetes without database operators for Kubernetes. And database operators for Kubernetes also need to be updated. How can you update database operator without downtime? Think about it. Uh, maybe database operator uh, has maintenance mode and you can ask him, hey, do not manage my database. Give me chance to, of doing hackish stuff. I will return managed mode later. Also, uh, operators can prevent users of doing stupid things. Uh, for example, run even number of members. Uh, so validation webhooks, are they part of your solution or not? Uh, is it possible to run sidecars uh, together with your database pods? Great question. Uh, is it possible to divide operators into different namespaces? Because you don't want to, if you broken cluster in one uh, namespace, you don't want to broke cluster in all namespaces. Uh, basically, you need to split uh, managed layer dif in different namespaces. And that's probably it because of time constraints it is only half of my slides i have plenty of questions if you still think that your database is production ready speak to me and uh, thank you the next big thing what you should do is join the web dates ukraine it is free online uh, virtual event which happens tomorrow and day after tomorrow uh, after kubecon talks so uh, after kubecon talks you can have a lunch or dinner and after that join devops days ukraine uh, both uh, founders of devops movement in the world patrick dubois and uh, andrew shepard are going to have a talk on devops days ukraine Kubernetes rock star Kelsey Hightower is going to have a talk on DevOps Days Ukraine, but not only that. 
Ukraine DevOpsers who made a great contribution for DevOps movement in Ukraine are going to have a talk. It is Anton Babenkov, Sevalod Polyakov, Volodymyr Tsap and Oleg Mikolaychenko are going to have a talks. Please join. It is free and online.